Hello there, what's up? Kermando here. Welcome to my Survivor Series predictions. And I'm going to do the NXT TakeOver Toronto prediction as well. And I just found out something rather disappointing. There's a 17 hour pre show for Survivor Series. Yay! Woohoo! Because we totes need that. Quantity over quality, eh, Vince? Anyways, Toronto. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Mojo for the NXT Championship. I think Nakamura's going to win. Uh, I feel this match should have been like a last man standing or something. Uh, it seemed like the way they'd been building it up it, and with Joe beating the hell out of Nakamura should have been a like a last man standing or should have had some sort of stipulation on it in my opinion. Um, maybe some more Joe will go on to debut in the main roster after this, I don't know. Um, but I've kind of liked the build to it. I think it's been, it's, been, it's been going really well and it's actually been almost every week there was something. Either Joe coming out and killing some jobber or he, he he actually beat up that Dan Matha guy. He was supposed to be making a debut. He just like beat the shit out of him. The guy was huge. He reminded me of um, Nathan Jones. He looked a bit like him. Um, but yeah, I thought the feud was going all right. And I like how NXT always does something different for the contract signings. Every single one, there's something new and different that you haven't seen before. Like this one with Joe and that. Joe brings a table out onto the stage and sits there and waits for Regal to bring it up to him. I thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, I'll go with Nakamura for the win. Uh, next, Asuka versus Mickey James for the Women's Championship. Um, when Mickey James was announced, like when it was like, it was like on WWE.com or something, I was just like, what the fuck? I just came out of nowhere, didn't see that one coming. Then there was rumours it was originally supposed to be Trish, but she was she got pregnant, so they went with Mickey, but then Triple H denied that, so I don't know if it's true or not. Um, I think Asuka will win. Could be a good match. It may be, it won't be a good match. Who knows? I have no idea. Um, <clears throat> and there hasn't really been any build to it. There's a Mickey James pr or promo thing when she de debuted at NXT or whatever you want to call it. Um, and Asuka is just Asuka. They do nothing with her. She just uh, does nothing. Um, that's pretty much her, her thing now. It seems to be the case for a lot of the times just for the women's champion. Sasha Banks was the same. You very rarely see them and they do nothing. Same thing's happening with Asuka right now. Um, and uh, as I've said before, I don't think her, she's being used that well. I, just, I, I don't see the hype because her matches are, aren't as great as people are making her out to be. Maybe that was the case in Japan. She's just not allowed to do that here. I don't know. Um, but I would like, I'd like to see someone else as champion or just have Asuka be a beast. I'll go with Asuka for the win. Bobby Roode versus Ty Dillinger. Um... I thought this 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 was a good idea, but I think there should have been a lot more to it in the build. Like it started with Bobby Roode leaving Ty Dillinger to get like raped by Sanity or whatever, which I thought was a really cool shot with Ty like Bobby, Bobby, and then they like take him away and, and kill him. Um, I thought there could have been more to it. They had they had a couple of brawls and some promos, but I think there could have been a lot more to it. I really want to see Ty win because he really deserves it. Um, Bobby Roode will be. Nothing will change to him whether he loses. He'll still be glorious until the end. Um, I would like to see Ty win. I hope he wins. I just have the feeling Bobby's going to win. And they're both from Canada, so I expect the crowd to be rather uh, boisterous during this one. Um, so I'll go with Bobby, but I'm pulling for Dillinger. Next, with the Authors of Pain versus TM61 in the finals of the Dusty Rose Team Classic. And Paul Ellering will be suspended above the ring in a shark cage. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when they announced that either. Uh, I, I was I remember hearing about it months ago about this like NXT crash set or something that was to go with the pay per view, and I was like, I don't think they'll actually do something with that. But then they did, and it's gonna happen. So yeah, apparently it was a thing back in the WCW days. So I I just think it's so bloody random. But hey. Is it's at least it's something. Um, I I think the authors are paying going to win it. To be honest, I, I could see them winning it. And uh, I just seen some site. I don't know what site it was actually, um, but they said that the sanity could make their presence felt. Maybe attack TM61 because TM61 beat them. So you never know. Maybe helping the authors pay and win. Or you never know. TM61 could pull up and uh, pull out an upset win or what have you. Um, TM61 is another one. Another guys who I don't haven't really seen the hype they haven't been al allowed to I guess do as much mo great moves or what have you I mean I only hear from what people say but 
I haven't seen anything special from these guys. They've done a couple moves or whatever, but I haven't seen anything special from them. Uh, I'll go with the Authors of Pain. Next, we have the Revival uh, versus DIY. A 2 out of 3 falls match for NXT Tag Team Championship. Um, maybe this will be the DIY's time to uh, win the titles. Um, it would make sense, I think. Um, I get the feeling Revival will probably still hold on to them. Um, and Scott Dawson just had a tweet the other day saying how he's, he's... He didn't directly say that he's pissed off, but he said that he's... He, had, he posted a picture, like of, I think it was of him lying on his head or something. I don't know what happened, but... And it, and it said, when you realise um, the headbangers and the spirit squad have made it to Smackdown Live before you or something... Um, but I don't see really why he's got to be pissed off. Just look at American Alpha, Ascension, Vaudevillains. I could go on. Why did? Why would he want to do that? Well, just so he gets more money or whatever. But you're not going to be booked well. You're not going to be allowed to do what made you popular in NXT. So what's the point? Um, so I'm gonna go. You know, I'm gonna go DIY. I think they're gonna win it. I think they're gonna win it. Two out of three falls. I think it could be a great match. Um, and this one isn't announced yet, but they're, they're thinking there could be a six-woman tag match between Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, and a partner versus Liv, Morgan, Aaliyah, and Ember Moon. Um, I think maybe the third person could be Mandy Rose or possibly Nikki Cross from uh, San A. But I think in more it could be Mandy Rose. Uh, I've actually been quite impressed by her in NXT in her couple of appearances. I think she's um, coming along good. I could see her being a future star. Um, and I like I like the Peyton Royce, Billy Kay teaming up thing. I think it's good. Um, the only sort of person I'm not really liking... Well, it's not that I, I don't like her. I don't think she's doing well. But I think she just half-asses her entrance. It's Aaliyah. Like, I'm breaking ground like a year ago. And she said she wanted to, like channel or Egyptian thing or some shit and she just comes out and she just half asses that fucking pose thing that she does. It looks so shit. Um, I think they're coming along okay. I, th I see Liv Morgan. I think she'll be good. Like, give it a year or so and I think she'll be she'll be pretty good. Um, Never Moon is awesome, man. So she had a weird they had a weird promo thing on NXT this week and she was trying to do this sort of like weird evil smile and she she was just failing. Like she was trying to be like all mischievous, but then she was sort of trying to do like a half smile, and it was just, it just wasn't happening. It wasn't working. But um, if that happens, then I'll go with um, Ember Moon in that one. And, uh, so there's our next tape. Let's get on to Survivor Series. Now I don't think there'll be much to talk about here. I don't think this will last too long. I know I say that all the time, but I do think so for this for this one. Uh, I don't. I don't see how there can be a, a two-hour pre-show for this. I. I just don't. There's not even a pre-show match announced. That's bullshit. If you're gonna yap for two fucking hours, um, but let's go to it. Uh, first, we have Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, uh, which they're calling Fantasy Warfare. Just got real. Blah blah blah. blah whatever. Um, I've I've enjoyed this. The build to this. I thought it's been all right. Apart from when Vince thought it would be a good idea. To have uh, Brock Lesnar be a heel, or try to be a heel, well he didn't even really try to be a heel, but to try and get a negative reaction in Brock Lesnar's hometown. And this is the guy that's a genius? Okay. Um, which failed. Um, apart from that, I think the build's been alright. Um, I just kind of wish there had been more. I think it would have been better if there was more. But I think it's been good. Like Goldberg's return, I thought it was awesome. And I actually got a little emotional at the end of it. I thought it was... You could t you could just tell how much Goldberg like really loves being like a hero for the kids. And he really... He really, um, you know, just just likes being a, a guy the kids can look up to. I mean, you got to respect that. I thought that was... I really, really felt it. Like when I when they, when it came to the end, I was like, "Damn, why the hell am I crying?" Um, I wasn't like bawling or crying or anything. Like that. I just a couple of tears. I just thought it was. Um, you could just really tell how much he, how much he in, in enjoyed it and how much he was glad to be back. Um, and then this week they had that brawl thing. Uh, well, they didn't actually brawl. Goldberg just beat up some peoples. Um, and that one time Goldberg tripped uh, when he was fighting Rusev. He said that he's been training like. A, shit ton of times I was reading an interview he's been training a ridiculous amount of times and he hasn't like been resting or anything um, and he said that that was really kind of the wake up call to try and 
to, uh, tone it back a bit. I was like, when he was saying, he said like three times a day or something, he was training or something and not getting any sleep. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Clo slow it down, get some sleep, boy. Um, so yeah, there's that. I'll go with Brock will probably win. I, I don't think Goldberg's going to win it. And I get the feeling he might have another match in the future. Um, I think Goldberg would have like a good match with like a Cena or something, but with this, it's just going to be a a Brock match where it's just loads of suplexes and and not a whole lot else. Um, and also, I wish I hope he's practiced the spear a good few times because the one he hit on Heyman was um, was pretty shit. He pretty much landed on his head, Goldberg. He pretty much landed on his head when he did it. And um, you couldn't really see it from the cam from the initial camera angle, but he did. Um, it was a pretty shitty looking from that from that point of view. Um, if you go and look at his spears from like WCW and and in WWE, there was so much more like devastating than you seen that one. It was kind of shitty. I mean, understandable, but you should have just practiced it a few times, you know. Um, so I'll, I'll go with Brock. I don't want him to win, like, but I'll go with Brock. Uh, I think he will. Um, now, this is where I don't think I'm going to talk much about, but the next match is the Team Raw Men's versus Team SmackDown Men's. Um, now I thought the ending of this week's Raw was amazing, I really did, like I was loving it, I was sitting there, I was hyped, I was loving it, everything was happening, I was re reacting to it, like when Dean Ambrose got the microphone and like, oh Dean Ambrose is gonna, he's gonna let loose on them, then they just start brawling, like the whole brawl was awesome, absolutely awesome, eventually like, uh, ending with like Reigns and Rollins doing the shield powerbomb with AJ Styles on it, everybody on the outside, other SmackDown people, I thought it was really good. I really, really did, and Jericho and his list, he's fucking awesome, most over guy on Raw, um, all the stuff he said, like to James Ellsworth and everybody else, just awesome, Jericho is absolutely awesome, and I think he should be Universal Champion at some point in the future, I do, I think he's he deserves it, and I think the Universal title would benefit from it, I think it'd be good, um, but like I said, I don't really know who could, who's going to win these matches, all of them, um, I just don't know because for like I'll just I'm not even gonna give a thing for each one, but even the the women's one, which uh, I'm not gonna say all their names, you know the names, and this and the tag team one. Um, the only one I could sort of predict is the women's one because I think they'll keep Charlotte's record uh, for pay per view wins. That's the only one I could see Raw winning. That's the only one I could make like a prediction and say, oh well, they'll win. But if not, then they could do the thing where Charlotte would just say, oh, well, I didn't lose. This person lost for me, or what have you. Um, so they, maybe they would do that it that way. Um, but usually in these things, SmackDown wins. Like, even before when they did all that bragging rights and all that other shit, SmackDown usually was the team that would win. Um, do I see that happening now? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, honestly, I don't know what to say, and it, I just... I like it that way. I don't know what's going to happen. I like that. Um, like, I didn't like when SmackDown was taped in the UK um, a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was, um, and all the uh, people who think they're cool on the internet posting the spoilers to, like, uh, in response to, like, WWE's tweet, like, oh, Shane McMahon replaces this thingy. Oh, this happens. Dickheads. Absolute dickheads. Think they're fucking cool and funny. Same like on our WWE's YouTube videos about oh, oh this happens, oh this happens. Why spoil it? Why spoil it? What, what, what are you gaining by doing that? Like spoiling it for other people. You don't have to fucking read the results. But apparently that makes you cool on the internet. Okay, okay. Keep telling yourself that. And I also got spoiled by the cruiserweight thing as well. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, like I said, I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh. I'll go with SmackDown getting m the majority of them, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't make a prediction, and I like that. Uh, now, next, we have The Miz versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. And if Zayn wins, the title goes to Raw. Now, I didn't think it was going to be saying that, that Miz would be in this match, but he won on SmackDown in an awesome match with Dolph Ziggler. Honestly, that running knee that he did... Oh my god, that was amazing, absolutely amazing, the running knee that Daniel Bryan did, he, that should be his new thing, he should do that every match now, that should be, he should hit that, then hit the skull cushion finale, that should be his finish, I just thought that was an epic match, and that move itself was just amazing, he hit it so well, so, so well, uh, the Miz is so underrated, and I did not see Ziggler winning, like, but, like, the night before, like, I was up late, and, 
I seen like a title of like a wrestling article and it said title changes hands and I was like, oh no, don't tell me this is the Intercontinental title. And I didn't click on it, I didn't want to know. Uh, and as I was watching it and the match was awesome, it was awesome and Miz finally wins. I, I didn't, I couldn't believe it. Like I thought Ziggler was going to have a longer reign. Um, but Miz won, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, annoyed with it because it was such an awesome match. And then later on talking smack, Miz, uh... He just looked like a star, an absolute star. His suit, the glasses, the title, he just looked like a star. Uh, so I can't, you know, I can't be upset with that, with the win there. Um, but I really hope Sa Sami Zayn doesn't win. Like, why the fuck would you take the title to Raw? That makes no sense. R R Reign shouldn't be a US champion. It's as simple as that. He's a, he's a main eventer. They're still having him in the scene. They don't even mention that he's fucking US champion. I, I, he doesn't need to be it. S s that title should be for like a Zayn, Neville, Kurt Axel. All these other guys should be having it, not fucking Reigns. They don't even they don't mention nothing about it. Uh, he's just there. He just has the title, and that's it. They do nothing with it. It's a waste of time. Why bring the title away from SmackDown? I, if they do that, I think it's fucking stupid. I really, really do. I think that's a dumb move if they go with that. Uh, so I hope Miz wins. He just won it. Why fucking take it away? That would be stupid. There's no need whatsoever for Raw to get that. They got enough fucking shit that they're ruining right now. There's no need for it. Um, so I'm going to go with Miz winning. He, and he better fucking win. Um, so yeah. Next one is Brian Kendrick versus Kalisto. Now this one was spoiled for me as well when this wasn't announced um, because the wrestling site didn't actually put spoiler I thought, oh, just WWE has announced a match or something, but no, it would happened on, it's announced on SmackDown. Um, thanks for spoiling that. Appreciate it. Um, but it's for the Cruiserweight Championship. If Kalista wins, the title comes to SmackDown and the entire Cruiserweight division, which I think would be stupid, again, because SmackDown's struggling as it is to, to use the people that they have. I think it would be dumb to bring in another bunch of dudes and they got to waste so much fucking time taping up the ropes and changing the turnbuckles and all this pish. They're just trying, that's WWE that's, that's, that's in a nutshell, they're just trying to force something on you all the fucking time. The same with the women, uh, with that women's revolution pish, they're just fucking sh forcing it, forcing it, forcing it, instead of just letting it happen, just getting, getting on with it. That's the fucking problem, that's why it worked in NXT years ago. Uh, they just did it. They just got on with it. Like bloody Lucha Underground. This week, Sexy Star became the bloody Lucha Underground champion. And and it was an awesome moment. But there's nothing... They didn't. They weren't going on about fucking women's rights and feminists and all this pish. They just got on with it and it was a fucking awesome moment. Uh, it was an awesome episode of Lucha Underground this week. It was Aztec Warfare 3. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, they just, they just force things all the fucking time. Just get on with it. I think there's this 205 live show thing. That's essentially SmackDown three hours now. Fucking stupid. Quantity over quality. That's all they fucking go for all the time. Um, but yeah, Cruiserweight should not go to SmackDown. N no need for it at all. Very little build to this. Actually, there's fucking no build to this, really. Uh, Kalisto had a fucking match with Oni Lorcan on SmackDown. Uh, and Oni Lorcan outshined him by a fucking mile. And Kalisto botches a fucking springboard crossbody thing. Um, only Lorcan, you know, just instantly fucking thingied it. Like I gave him props for it. He was he was on a fucking roll. Uh, totally outshined Kalisto. Totally better than Kalisto. Uh, like I want to like Kalisto. It's, it's something else. Else I've seen someone seems they want to like Kalisto, but you just can't get over all the botching he does, and it's fucking true. Um, it's, I was honestly just shit, and there's been very little build to it. Pointless. Waste of fucking time. Um, so I hope Kendrick wins, just because it would be stupid to bring them to SmackDown. People are like, oh, well, SmackDown's awesome, but they're not, they're struggling as it is to use all the people they've got. Um, so yeah, I'll go with Kendrick for the win. Um, uh, yeah, I've still yelled for fucking 19 minutes, but I guess it's not too bad. Um, they took Corbin out of SmackDown, um, apparently he was supposed to get, like, a big push or something. This was going to be the start of it. That was something I read, like, the last pay-per-view. Um... <laughs> but he got took out for Shane McMahon. They did that injury thing, <coughs> injury angle. Um, I heard that he's supposed to be facing Cena when Cena comes back, and that'll maybe be the start of a, a bigger push from. I don't know. Uh, I just kind of wish they'd let Corbin do like his own promo, same like Enzo and Cassidy. He had this thing on on WWE. I just watched it last night on their YouTube channel where they run down their Survivor Series opponents. It was like three minutes, and Cass actually sounded legitimately 
like he sounded real. He sounded like it was coming from him. Um, it, it was actually it was actually funny. It was probably the funniest thing I've heard from them since coming to the main roster. It was really good. Um, they should let they should let more guys be like that. Let them be themselves instead of forcing them like Cass Corbin. They sound like fucking robots when they're talking. They really do. Um, it's because they're they read they have to read everything word for fucking word. It's so stupid. Uh, I just wish they'd let them be, be more themselves, and that goes for everybody. Um, but yeah, there's the old predictions. I guess 20 minutes for two shows isn't just too bad. I, it's not bad. Usually I, I yap like bloody 25 minutes for one show. So yeah, I didn't think I'd have much to talk about with the, for this because I can't really predict three of the matches. Um, but there you have it. There's the predictions. Um, I don't really look forward to NXT to be honest. Um, I just I don't know. I just, I just I don't like it's the network video player. I just don't like it. I'm just not a fan of it at all. See if it was like like a paid thing on YouTube or if it was a, a video player almost identical to YouTube, it'd be fine. But it's not. It's pish. I just don't like it. Um, that's why I watch things on Sky Box Office. So I've got to pay twenty pounds to watch it. I'd rather pay for quality. That's that's why I like quality. Something WWE doesn't do, they go for quantity. But yeah, I'm not really looking forward to watching NXT TakeOver. I could wait and then watch it tomorrow, but I don't really think I want to do that either. I'd rather stay up, at least it would maybe help me a bit for staying up all night Sunday, I guess. And we've got like fucking 27 hours of it to watch, you know, because of the 17 hour pre show. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Just no need for that whatsoever. Uh, I th I just looked it up because I, I knew it was like the show was four hours. So I thought I'll just look it up, and I was hoping, but no. Two-hour pre-show with no matches. <sighs> Thanks for watching. See you later, dummy.